Yo, what's good? Welcome to the channel. I'm Josh, and today I'm gonna show you how to make a break and speed just like this. The first thing that I wanna talk about are the guitars. A lot of times for his hooks, he either has like an arpeggiated type riff or some big kind of like crunchy Midwest emo -y kind of chords. And so I decided to go with the big crunchy kind of chords here. Kind of like a simple little progression if you can't play guitar there are some things you can do i would recommend checking out splice looperman waves also got a guitar loop pack coming out so be on the lookout for that but if you don't want to do that and really want to make your own patterns i would recommend something like electric sunburst and then just messing around with patterns specifically major seven chords major nine chords and minor ninth and minor seven chords you get this kind of like midwest type sound So that's just using the crunch standard preset. It's really just a matter of messing around until you get some chords that sound good to you. Once you do that, you can really chop it up, affect it, fuck it up, do whatever you want to do with it. For the processing, I'm using the Neural DSP Soldano. I really like this clean up nice preset with a little bit more overdrive just to kind of give it a little bit more crunch. And then we've got left and right going on, which is always super important to get that big wide sound. Group those two together, got a little EQ taking out the lows just so we leave that room for the 808. At the beginning of the track, I had this kind of thing going on. I have a cool little effect I like to do sometimes. It has that moonlight type vibe to it, and this is how you do it. So I played this guitar. Then I drag that into the Ableton sampler. And then what's crucial here is you want to change this glide to portamento. And then you can kind of mess with the time just to make it the way you want. But then what I did was just draw in the MIDI. It's just an octave up. When it does that, it kind of has this like gliding effect. What I did was this process and resample it each chord change. So I would have this right here and then resample it. And I would move the start of the loop to the next chord. Then I would just repeat this process for every chord change until all of them had this kind of gliding feature. So this is just something you can kind of mess around with. You could go up, down, you could glitch certain parts, you could pitch up certain parts. This is just an easy technique that you can use to kind of spice up your loops. After that, we've got the drums. For these kind of beats, we usually have the snare on the three. And so something else I did was alternate the snare sounds just to give it a little bit more variation. Also, just to let you know, all these sounds that I'm using today are part of my free break-ins kit. Make sure to go cop that link down below. Next, we got the 808. I wanted a little bit more impact to the hook, so I also added a crash on there. And then something Briggins loves to do is use these little granular perk type loops. Which I also have some of my new kit. It's just super weird, but in the context of the drums and everything, I think it sounds pretty cool. Little hi-hat for some more rhythm. Lastly, we got the vocals. And so for Breakin' type vocals, you really don't have to do that much because I feel like his vocals are usually pretty dry. Mainly what you need to focus on is really simple EQ and compression. Maybe a little saturation or overdrive if you want a little bit grittier of a sound. Here's what all the vocals sound like together. Lately I've been making friends with the silence. Emotions heavy yet a pain keeps piling. The teenage emo shit. The really important thing for Briggins type vocals is the use of vocal layering. What you would do is have your lead vocal, and then I would usually recommend at least four layers on top of that. The layers that you would do are two doubles, which basically just means you're re-singing the same melody as the lead. I would make sure to pan those hard left and hard right. And then what Briggins loves to do is use a falsetto stack. What this is is basically an octave up from your lead, and it's kind of in like your this nasally part of your voice. Chris Brown, Usher, Trey songs type shit. And here's what that sounds like warning this is not the prettiest vocal I know, I know. Thank you. I appreciate it. What all of these layers do is really add a thickness and an airiness to your vocal and just help it cut through the mix better. But for the processing, it's pretty similar across all of the tracks. Got some basic compression going on CLA 76, but it doesn't matter what compressor you use. What matters is just that you're getting that vocal to sit in one place in the mix and the volume's not jumping up and down. We got a little de-esser just on the default preset. And what you want to do, your de-esser is just mess with the threshold. If you have it all the way up, it won't affect the sound at all. And if you have it all the way down. Lately, I've been making Something I like to do with de is start all the way at the bottom and then kind of go up to taste until it sounds good. Lately, I've been 
making friends with the silence. You don't want it to totally squash and kill the life of your sounds. You just want it to take off those little peak and transient S sounds. And we got a little EQ, just taking out some of the mud, boosting some around 2K for clarity, then a little bit around 10 to 12, just to add a little brightness to the vocal. Got auto-tune EFX. Important things to think about here, are just making sure that the key is right and then your retune speed. And honestly, I don't think Brinkins uses a really fast retune speed, but I needed it because your boy doesn't have as good of a voice as Brinkins, obviously. Aww. You could also humanize it a little bit if you wanted to, just to give it more of a natural sound. We got another DSer just really cleaning it up. Something else I like to do is group my background vocals and then take out some of the lows, just so that lead vocal really occupies that space. It helps differentiate between the two. Also got a little soothe, and then just some more DSing. Something else that's cool to do on these kind of tracks is in the second part of the hook, introduce another element just to help the track move along. And here's what I decided to do here. I wanted something to occupy that top end while the guitars are occupying the low mids. As far as the mastering goes, just got this classic clipper going on and then a little bit of ozone, just making sure that the bass is mono and then kind of just widening everything else out. That's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to let me know what you think in the comments and if there are any other videos that I should make in the future. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can get more videos like this every single week. Regardless of anything though, y'all keep vibing, making dope music. I'll see you next time. to the rush.